Hey y'all, welcome back to this week's episode of AMA Friday with Amy Miller, Recruiting in Yoga Pants. So this week we are continuing our discussion on internal mobility and specifically who owns what and what is the process for internal transfers versus external hiring. So we had a really cool poll on LinkedIn, got some good results, 450 votes, I think. So we'll break that down for you here in just a moment. And quick reminder, we kicked off our conversation last week about internal mobility. So you can check that video out as well as a video I forgot I did a year ago, (laughs) y'all. December 30th of last year, I talked about competing with internal talent. Maybe not what you expected. So that's a nice little video that fits nicely between last week's and this week. So I will link to that one up above as well. So go check out both of those if you have not already, and then come on back to this one. So let's talk mechanisms. How does this internal stuff happen? And what do you as a job seeker need to know? That's what we're gonna try to cover today. Next week, we're gonna kick off the new year with our final, hopefully final discussion on this topic. I'm gonna share some cautionary tales with y'all. I've seen this go really badly. (laughs) So tune in for that. Got a couple of uh, fun stories to share with you. What not to do. (laughs) Okay, so first our poll results. Who is responsible for internal hiring, recruiting, interviewing, what have you? Four choices, corporate recruiters, hiring managers, both working together, or dedicated internal teams, which one do you think was the winner? Hmm? Not surprisingly, you can see the results here, not surprisingly, both hiring manager and internal corporate recruiter, someone like me, working together, 39%. Far and away the winner, not surprising in the slightest, that's very common. Second is the hiring manager solo. This is also fairly common. Uh, We do expect managers to really kind of own this for the most part, even with some assistance from folks like me. Um, I'm focused on external. I'm busy, I'm going outside, I'm, I'm doing other stuff, right? I'm not internal movement. That's your game, baby, not mine. Then you have some companies where the internal recruiter, the corporate recruiter actually owns that. I've worked at a company that did that. It was fine. We basically treated internals just like everybody else. I mean, they went through the same interview process, which I don't agree with. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, It was just, just another candidate, right? In my hiring manager's eyes. So pros and cons to that as well. And then, of course, we had a very small chunk that had dedicated internal recruiting support. Oh, is that not the dream? (laughs) So I love that. I think that's amazing. The more help, the better. Uh, But I also recognize that that's something we'll see in larger companies, usually, where there is enough movement and enough activity that it makes sense to actually pay for a headcount to take on all that work just as a as a single job. So not always the case. You don't always need a dedicated person or team for that. But sometimes you might. So it's totally okay to set it up that way too. Okay. So how do these folks, whoever they are and whatever ownership they have, get this done? So let's first of all, I want to talk about timing just very quickly. There are certainly some folks who feel very strongly that you should open a role internally only first. Maybe. Again, recruiting lives in the gray. I know I've said that to y'all a million times. Recruiting lives in the gray. There are very few black and white, yes or no, absolutes in recruiting. This is one of them for me. Like there, there is no absolute here, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I ask my hiring managers, do you have anybody in mind? Have you thought about promoting someone into this role? How's your team gonna feel if we bring somebody in from the outside? Like I ask these questions because I want to really understand what are the pros and cons of going internal only first or going externally from the jump. Again, there is no wrong answer here. I need y'all to get that, okay? (laughs) I don't care. 
I don't care what you read. <laughs> There's no wrong answer. But I want us to really think carefully and thoughtfully about the impact of this choice. So if a manager's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm actually promoting somebody. Why are you and I talking? I got other shit to do. Go do your promotion, close this role, and we're getting on with our lives, <laughs> right? Or, oh, yeah, I'm actually talking to a couple people from, you know, a sister team. And cool. Let me get ready to backfill that guy when you hire him. <laughs> you know, So I want to understand those moving pieces. Um, and that could be a really good case for, yeah, let's just go internal for now. Let's see what the next week or two brings. If the person declines or doesn't work out for whatever reason, we'll revisit. That's okay. But if a manager's like, I straight up don't got nobody. I, I don't think this job exists anywhere else. I have talked to a few people. They've turned me down whatever it may be, you know what? We're just going to open it up. We're just going to open it up to everybody. And I'm okay with that. Here's where I have an issue with timing. Some people feel very strongly that internal applicants should get a finite window. That somehow it, I, I, I can't follow, the, the logic isn't there for me, but I'm just going to tell you what I heard, okay? <laughs> so, you open the role internal only for like two weeks and then you shut it down and then you go outside. Well, what if I was on vacation for two weeks and I didn't see it? Too bad, missed your shot. What kind of nasty shit is that? Ser respectfully. <laughs> Like, this is the problem. Y'all get these ideas and you get stuck on this train of thought and you don't realize the impact long term of what you're saying, ma'am. Common sense is not a flower that grows in everyone's garden. I understand that. I just find it weird when recruiters come in with that shit. It's very weird to me. Moving on. So here's my thing. Does it make sense in some instances to start internal only? 100%. We talked about some of those reasons. I've got a good buddy who leads recruiting for a sovereign nation in the US. This is an indigenous, um, you know, community that runs their own nation, right? Like in the middle of Oklahoma. And they open their roles to tribal members first. That like no, no questions asked, no, no way around it. To the best of my knowledge, you open a new role one week, tribal members only. I have no problem with that. I'm totally fine with that. I understand that. That is the way they have structured their community. But if you then tell me, oh, hey, week's up. Too bad. You don't get to apply now. That's crazy to me. Like that, that's literally like crazy to me. Like I, you are never going to make that make sense to me. And I like to think I'm a pretty reasonable person for the most part. So those are your choices, right? You can typically open internal only for a period of time and then open it to everyone else without shutting anyone out. Or you can just open it for both from the jump. Either one is fine with me. They both make sense for different reasons. There's also very real circumstances in which the internal talent that you need simply doesn't exist. My current team that I've been with for four years, when I joined, we literally had no option for certain roles to go inside. Like the, the skill set literally did not exist because we were building something that had never been built before at this company. That's not a knock on anyone's skills. That's not saying, you know, that's not diminishing growth. That's not inhibiting people from moving around or getting promoted. That's simply saying, do you know what a reaction wheel is? Me neither. Let's go find someone who does. It's not rocket science, unless it actually is rocket science. And then that, never mind, it is rocket science. But my point is, <laughs> there's going to be times when you have to make decisions based on the needs of the business and the available talent both inside and outside. Okay? Can we all agree on that, at least? Good. Glad we worked that out. So very quickly, we'll wrap this up with the actual tactical mechanisms and then the questions I want you as a job seeker to be prepared to ask. Okay. 
Benefits of being an internal, you almost always have the right to request an informational interview with the hiring manager. You can pull up the internal careers page, you can actually see, for the most part, see the name attached, oh, Joe Smith is the hiring manager, cool, I'm gonna hit him up, I'm gonna slack him. All right, awesome, you get to do that as an internal. You are also probably going to have a modified interview loop, so you're not gonna have to go through a full round like an external person would. We've already covered the company fit, right? Or if I'm Google, we've already decided that you're googly. <laughs> so you don't have to go through that kind of interview again. You did it once, you're here, you're good. So, you know, that's another benefit, right? You're going to have a modified or shorter loop. You're just going to focus on role-related technical areas or specific competencies that align to the job. Um, you can also get feedback. A lot of times we will actually be able and encourage the hiring managers to share feedback with you if you're not successful. So the internal process is usually pretty quick, pretty clean, pretty smooth, and pretty candidate centric. So what does all of this mean for my external folks? First of all, I don't want you to be discouraged, okay? Once again, I am begging you, check out the internal competition video. It is not as dire as you might think, but here's the questions that I want you to ask when you are connecting with a recruiter who is telling you about an opportunity at an organization. Flat out ask them, what does internal mobility look like at your company? How does internal mobility work? Obviously, if this all goes well and I get this job, I plan on sticking around, because that's a concern. I will tell you, some recruiters will, the, the little little hairs on the back of their neck might start standing up, right? Like, oh man, this person's asking about transfers already? Oh shit, what are they gonna do? Get here and bounce in five minutes? My manager will be pissed. <laughs> I understand that. But you can just explain, like, I'm interested in the long-term potential. I'm interested in understanding how this company looks at growth, how this company looks at internal mobility. You know, have you looked at any internal folks? Like, are you still, you know, am I potentially interviewing alongside other applicants who may already work there? Candidate, I mean, look, the recruiter may or may not tell you, I would, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Right? So here's the thing. Companies will typically do one of two things. They will either interview several people and make a decision for who they like best for whatever reasons, or and this is increasingly common, they will make the offer to the person that passes the interview first. That could be an external candidate. We compare the person and the interview feedback to the role, not to other candidates. Again, there's pros and cons to that as well, right? You're gonna, just because of timing, because of bad luck, because of whatever, you could miss a stellar person who was on vacation. But it could also be looked at as a fair mechanism because you're not comparing. You're comparing to the role, you're comparing to the needs of the job, not who do I like better? Well, that person had red hair. I don't want a ginger on my team. That's not fair. <laughs> I understand, but it's not fair. <laughs> All right, hopefully that cleared up some mystery. Again, there is absolutely nothing wrong as long as it's done ethically and transparently, trans transparently <laughs> and in accordance with laws and regulations and policies and whatnot. But the most important thing for you job seekers, don't overthink this. Don't get spun up in the emotion about it or the crazy ways that people try to spin this stuff. Companies, for the most part, are genuinely looking for ways to hire people who can quickly jump in and start solving problems. That's what I want you to focus on, okay? Understand how the game is played, yes. Have those honest discussions with the recruiters, yes. See if you can understand how a company is looking at internal mobility. But most importantly, focus on positioning yourself as the solution. All right, friends, we'll see you next week. <laughs>